Welcome to Electron Online, and here we're going to do our next attempt at finding a way to graph a parabola. Notice I made one change compared to the previous video. I made it six ways. We're going to show you one more way. I'm going to throw in another technique uh, that's kind of uh, a little bit of a, an ins insight what is to come when we actually get into doing calculus. So I'll show you that there's other techniques besides algebra techniques to solve uh, and to graph parabolas. But anyway, starting again with the same equation, y equals x squared plus 4x plus 3, we're going to use a technique where we're going to convert it to that general form that makes it easier to graph y equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus a constant. Another way of looking at this technique is it's very much like the what we call completion of the square technique or completing the square technique. All right, let's see what that means. That means we're going to take the plus 3 and move it to the right, make some space. So we have y equals x squared plus 4x, and we write plus 3 here because what we want to do is we want to add another term in there that will complete the square, that will make this into something we can write as a binomial square. That's what we mean by completing the square. We want to write it in a format where we can factor it into a binomial that is squared, and we'll show you in just a moment what that means. So here, the way to do that is you get y is equal to x squared plus 4x, Plus, now you take the coefficient in front of the x term, the middle term, you take half of that and square it. So that would be plus, oop, I already wrote the plus, plus the quantity 4 divided by 2 squared. That's the term you're going to add. That will make this into a perfect square. We can then write it as the, a binomial squared. Again, you take the middle term, the coefficient of the middle term, you take half of that and you square it. Of course, since we add that, to the right side, we also have to subtract it from the right side. So that's plus 3 minus the quantity 4 over 2 quantity squared. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this and I realize, okay, I can write that as, if we simplify that, y is equal to x squared plus 4x plus, that would be 4 divided by 2 is 2, quantity squared would be plus 4, so that would be plus 3 minus 4. Notice I have a plus 4 here, a minus 4. When you take those away, you end up with the same original equation, so things are exactly the same. But now when you look at this part of the equation, you can write this as a binomial squared. You can write this as y is equal to the quantity x plus 2 squared, and then we have plus 3 minus 4, that becomes minus 1. And notice we've now taken this and written as a binomial squared. Now this also looks like that general form where we can very easily graph it because we know now that the vertex of the parabola will be shifted two units to the left and one unit down from the origin. So now what we can say is that here is our x-y axis, y, x, we're shifted to the left. Remember, when this is a plus, the shifting is to the left, so we're shifted left two units, one, two, that's minus two, and then we're shifted downward one unit, minus one, and let me move this minus 2 over here. So this is the point now at minus 2, minus 1, where the vertex of the parabola is. Now, since there's a positive a or positive 1 in front, we know that it opens upward. One more thing that might help us graph it is find out where the parabola will cross the y-axis. So where it crosses the y-axis, that is where x equals 0. So to find what we call the y-intercept, to find that point, intercept, to find the point where the graph crosses the y-axis, we're going to set x equal to 0. So set x equals 0 because anywhere along the y-axis, the x value of the function will be 0. All right, so uh, y-intercept is equal to, that would be 0 squared plus 4 times 0 plus 3, or the y-intercept occurs at 3. That's where x equals 0, y equals 3. So 1, 2, 3. We know that the parabola also crosses the y-axis at that point. Now we have two points. The vertex, we know it opens upward, and we know that it also crosses through the point right there. So now you can probably find a fairly good way of graphing this parabola. And that's a pretty good representation of what that function looks like, what that graph looks like. And that's how we do that. That's how we use the completion of the square method or the conversion to that general format to find out how to graph this particular parabola. And you can do that for almost any parabola.
that's how we do that.